figure it out and try and watching people watching it and and there were petitions to try and keep it up. I mean, everything you can possibly imagine kind of went on with this thing. Um, and then it was knocked down. And um, Councillor Flounders was the guy who was, you know, virtually solely responsible for doing it. Um, and he just was obsessed with getting rid of this thing. It's a shame, I think, that it could, didn't have a chance to become invisible, like architecture becomes invisible. Um, and I think that's an interesting aspect, and maybe it's something that I, I will sort of work with at some point, but um, this wasn't meant to be with this piece. And it had this, this sort of fight for life, and, you know, now it's a park with closed gates and people sort of throw their dogs over the fence to have a shit in there, and it's, you know, that's sort of what the place is now. And it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, it really is ridiculous. And there's probably very few countries in the world that would do that to, a, you know, an artwork that had been such a, a success in many ways. But, you know, we managed to do it. <laughs> so. It taught me how to become sort of tougher about not what I do, because I've always been very tough about what I do, but it's sort of dealing with the consequences of what I do, really, I think. And with the memorial in Vienna, which took five and a half years to make, and I spent two years, two and a half years, really, really fighting to make it happen. And then I said, sod you, you know, sort it out yourselves. There's really a big problem here. I'm not from Vienna, I'm not, you know, not from Austria. And I didn't really understand what was going on. I mean, I knew what was going on and I understood the politics and I understood um, that it was really very, very tricky, the whole thing. But I didn't quite understand the machinations of how the political situation works over there. And it's extraordinary, incredibly bureaucratic and um, and also quite provincial. And it became very difficult to deal with. When I was asked to put in a, a proposal for the Holocaust Memorial, um, which was actually quite soon after House, I was quite reluctant. But then I started to think about it and think that it felt like a challenge to try and make something that was both sort of poetic and aggressive about the Holocaust. So really something that was quite kind of upfront and non-figurative. So it felt like a real challenge to do this. So I came up with this proposal and it was for a very specific place in the historical um, sort of centre of Vienna and a, a square called Judenplatz which was a, um, in the what was the Jewish quarter and it was this historical square medieval square that had a it originally had a synagogue on it the synagogue was raised to the ground um, in the sort of 14th century I think lots of Jews were burnt eventually after five and a half years, we now have in the square my memorial um, excavations that, is, that you get into through the museum and, and a sort of Jewish history museum. And it's quite an extraordinary place and it works incredibly well. But, you know, one of the main problems, I think, during the building of the piece was essentially the politics that go on in Austria. And there is a, a, a quite a right wing um, situation over there. I mean, that's, that's all changed. And I think during the time that we were making the piece, the government changed actually three or four times. So there were kind of elections going on continually, which also made it very problematic. It was really about being on the outside of something and looking at something. And I think that was partly to do with the fact that I'm not Jewish, that I felt that I was dealing with a subject that was really something that I'd always known about um, and something that I had some involvement, I mean, not really involvement, but I had, you know, I had friends of my family had had 
friends that were in concentration camps. And I, you know, I knew of people and I knew of people's histories and, you know, kind of dreadful things that had happened to them. And I was, I think, profoundly affected by that in some way. I lived in Berlin um, in 92, 93 for a year or so. And when I was there, one of the things that really fascinated me was just people watching and watching people of the, you know, that would have been my grandparents' age. And, and you just look at them and just think, what did you do? You know, what, where were you during this time? And, you know, where are you from? And, and not wanting to blame anybody and not wanting to, you know, but ju it was just kind of something that I got a bit obsessed with. And I did a lot of reading when I was living there and I went to a lot of concentration camps. And this was before I'd been asked to, to make this proposal. So I'd been thinking about all of these things and I was trying to work out a way of sort of bringing these things together, but also be, because I know about Austria's history and I also wanted to be quite brutal about it and I didn't want to make it sort of what the, I think the Austrians were doing, which was to try, you know, to sort of say sorry and sort of also, but also put a band-aid on it and hope that, because they're not really very good at saying sorry, the Austrians, and they're in a little bit in denial about what happened. And I wanted to, to really kind of make this point, but I had to do it very carefully because obviously I couldn't let them know I was trying to make this point. So I was really, I was wanting to make something that was quite brutal. And as a library, you know, using the books um, and turning the spines of the books on the inside, so you had no sense of what was written in the books so it could have been lists of names it could have been jewish history it could have, you know it could have been whatever whatever you want it to be and can interpret it as so sort of making this kind of bunker like structure then with these very sort of blank books and these two doors that you can't open that have two little um holes where the doorknobs are and they're the only way that sort of you feel like you could get into the piece there's no light switch there's no electricity plugs there's no way in there's no light there's nothing it's just this kind of blank space I'm very glad it's over with and I'm very relieved it's over with and I'm now finally very very proud to have made it When I made House, the one thing that sort of frustrated me about House was the staircase. And when you went inside House, you know, because it was obviously made from the inside, what we had to do was we actually cut the staircase in half or in actually left a third of it and sort of it was attached to the wall still. And we cast around it. And it really felt like I'd cheated. And, uh, and it always irritated me that, that somehow I hadn't managed to either pull out the, the wood where the stairs were or somehow make it more complete. No one else knew this apart from me. It's purely my own kind of neurosis. And I, it had always niggled me, and this was in 1993. I didn't quite know how to make that form concrete because if you look at a staircase, if you walk up a staircase, to sort of imagine that as a series of blocks or as a, a space filled with air, sort of mummifying the air. Um, it's actually incredibly difficult to do, so it doesn't really have a beginning or an end. Every single staircase is different. And um, I just got very intrigued by the notion of how to try and make these things concrete and then how to, you know, how by turning them or by turning them upside down or just by moving them slightly, you could completely disorientate the viewer which is what I tried to do with a piece that was recently shown at the Serpentine. I think it's up to the person that's looking at the work to, to sort of work that out for themselves. So whether or not they decide to be excited about, you know, form, colour, texture, um, analysing the, the sort of history of a staircase or 
analyzing architecture or you know whatever it is that people choose to use as their key to get into works you know i'm happy for them to do that i'd been asked to put in a proposal for um, the plinth in Trafalgar Square, which I initially was thought was a kind of crazy idea, and then spent the day there in Trafalgar Square and looked at this plinth, and it, it, you know, it really is a very, very beautiful piece of architecture. And I decided that I wanted to put in a proposal for it, um, kind of you know, in retrospect, probably quite stupidly, <laughs> because it took an awful long time to make. And I came up with this notion of just simply having the plinth, making a cast of it, and making it in a clear resin and inverting it upon itself. So you just had a sort of reflection of itself. So it sounds very simple, and as all good ideas are, um, they take forever to make. And I spent literally I think about four years sort of trying to work out how to make it and then finally making it and putting it out there. I just loved the idea of making something that was incredibly quiet and calm in this absolutely kind of chaotic city central, you know, location in the middle of Trafalgar Square. I kind of hate public sculpture, which is sort of sounds ridiculous considering I make it, but you know, I like the way you can almost make something kind of disappear. I mean, it, it was a bit, you know, the, again, the way the sort of press dealt with it, and whatever, you know, they're calling it a glacier mint and all of that, which is, of course, you know, what, what you would expect. But I also think it was um, a very serious piece of sculpture and to try and make something in a situation like that, that kind of almost disappears, that that you can sort of ultimately ignore if you want to, in the way that in Trafalgar Square, Nelson's column is kind of ignored. It's the most sort of ridiculous sort of folly, but it's an amazing thing as well. But it's sort of people don't even really see it anymore. It's just there. To try and work with those things and to try and work with the traffic and the buses and the the National Gallery and the fountains and all of these things and to just try and make something incredibly quiet that sort of sat there with some sort of dignity was what I was trying to do and um, hopefully I achieved it. <laughs>